Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about Phineas and Ferb, the movie Canis Against the Universe. Before we begin, let me know in the comments if you were looking forward to this or what your thoughts were if you've seen it already. And make sure to give this a thumbs up if you like these reviews. It helps me out immensely if you do that. Also, if you're new here and you like movies, whether it be blockbusters, hidden gems, or everything in between, please consider hitting that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with reviews of new releases and some classics. But now, let's jump right into it. Based off the hit Disney Channel show, this finds Candace, the sister of the show's two title characters, frustrated that she can never get her parents to believe her genius brothers go on wild adventures, and she begins to feel unimportant. She's soon abducted by aliens, which leads Phineas and Ferb and their friends to go on a mission to rescue her. However, the alien leader, voiced by Ali Wong, tells Candace she has a hidden element inside of her that's important to their people, which may possibly lead her to finding her place in the world. So I'll be honest, I didn't watch this show growing up. In fact, I didn't really watch too much of the Disney Channel at all. I saw reruns of the late 80s and early 90s shows like DuckTales, Goof Troop, and Chippendale Rescue Rangers when I was really young, but I was more of a Cartoon Network and Nickelodeon guy. I was well out of the age range when Phineas and Ferb was on the air, and I'll be honest, at the time, I wrote it off as just another kid show, so this wasn't anything I was eagerly anticipating. But with the movie coming out, I decided to give the show a shot, and discovered it is in fact not just another kid show. As of this video, I'm not done with it yet, but I watched a fair amount of episodes so I'd have a decent grasp on the characters and the jokes going into it, and I'm glad I did because so far I've enjoyed the show and I've enjoyed the movie. And I can safely say, while it's a standalone movie and each episode of the show is standalone, you definitely need to have a decent sense of what the show is in order to appreciate this. If you're looking into starting Phineas and Ferb, don't start with this movie. You can in theory get away with it, especially because there's a fun opening musical number that kind of establishes most of what you need to know, but not everything, and this does kind of rely on your enjoyment of the show to fully understand who some of these characters are. But it's really fun, and it's one of those movies we really needed right now. It's an upbeat, bright, positive movie that doesn't want to beat you down or tell you nothing other than the world sucks. Actually, for the most part, it's very feel-good, very funny, and lighthearted, with very catchy songs that just had me moving to the beat at times. Not to say that it doesn't get deep or there's no character development by any means, I'd say this actually goes way deeper than the show has, at least from what I've seen. The show is pretty much a standard setup of Phineas and Ferb want to do something, Candace tries to bust them, then you have Perry the Platypus and Dr. Doofenshmirtz in a subplot battling it out, then they ruin Phineas and Ferb's inventions, and Candace is left frustrated when her parents don't believe her. This actually explores a little more of the dynamic between Candace, Phineas, and Ferb. In fact, this is really Candace's movie more than anything. She's not just part of this shtick as she is in the show, and her characterization was done well. It was very sweet, and she really just wants to find meaning in her life, which we see here is partially what fuels her somewhat combative relationship with her brothers, and it makes her very relatable. And Phineas and Ferb's characterization was also done really well, actually. I like how they realize Candace may not feel appreciated all the time, and we see that they always have cared about her, especially since they're never antagonistic towards her the way she is towards them. They legitimately care about her, and don't hesitate for a second to start up this rescue mission, and are persistent with bringing her back. As I mentioned, in the show, Doofenshmirtz and Perry the Platypus are usually part of the B storyline, but this time we actually see Doofenshmirtz teaming up with Phineas and Ferb and their friends to help them out, and Perry is along for the ride and helping them as well, but in secret. And this was where the movie was at its most fun. I was laughing so much at the conversations between Doofenshmirtz and these kids. They make fun of his ridiculous inventions, and he's so petty that he constantly engages in heated arguments with them over the tiniest things, especially their one friend Isabella. That was a lot of fun. The humor in general worked really well. There were jokes here and there that weren't laugh out loud hilarious, but for the most part, I just had this giant smile on my face. There is especially this one running gag where there's a certain difficult word the characters are trying to pronounce, and Phineas and Ferb will say it five times fast, and whenever another character sees them do it, their reactions would just be great. And this would also get extremely meta at times, more than the show ever did from what I've seen. It's not often, but there are gags such as characters specifically referencing scene transitions, among other things that worked really well. As for criticisms, the alien storyline works for the most part, and I liked Ali Wong's voice work, but it takes a very predictable turn in the third act, and it's probably the most uninspired part of the movie. It's not bad, but you'll have this sense in the back of your head of where you think this is going to go, and sure enough, it goes there. So it kind of backtracks a bit. For the first two acts, it's usually going bigger and bolder, but the final act, while it does a good job with Candace, Phineas, and Ferb's characterizations, the direction they go in just plays it a bit too safe. The final few minutes are great, it didn't end on a disappointing note, it's just easily the weakest part of the movie. This was nice. For those of you who are big fans of the show, you're going to have a blast with this. For anyone who's never seen the show before, don't start with this. I'd say watch as many episodes as you can before checking this out because you'll appreciate it so much more. It's a bit predictable in its third act, but it's still a great time overall. It's funny, has great songs, goes deeper than the show has, and has a feel-good energy that makes for an enjoyable watch for all ages. Phineas and Ferb the movie, Candace Against the Universe, gets an 8 out of 10. 
So let me know, have you seen Phineas and Ferb the movie, or are you planning to see it, and what were your thoughts? Are you a big fan of the show, and did it live up to your expectations? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and share it, and for more movie reviews and film discussion, please make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay updated. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'll catch you next time.